Growing up in Kent in the late 70s and early 80s, seaside holidays were always the highlight of the year. Living on a farm, I'd spend the haymaking weeks planning and preparing, collecting together all the things that I might need, pens, pencils, paper, magnifying glass, magic tricks. We'd meet my grandparents and my great aunt Joan at a bungalow at Lydon Sea. Driving there in our cream Citroen Diane with the roof rolled back. Strangely, I can still remember the number plate of that car, DUF517V. I think everyone can remember the number plate of their first car. Because my parents spent a lot of time working on the farm, I spent a lot of time with my elderly relatives. When I think back, I wonder why I never asked my grandparents and my great aunt Joan about their past lives. But it didn't really occur to me. My granddad was quite serious. I knew that he'd been a bank manager in Sheffield. And my mum told me that the famous actor Patrick McGowan had worked for my granddad. Who I didn't know at the time but was famous for being the prisoner. And Dr Sin. And the other story I heard that my aunt Joan did tell me. I think because I used to like Doctor Who. She said that she once met Doctor Who at a petrol station. It turned out it was Patrick Troughton. That thing where you recognise someone from TV and you, and you think you know them. It was only later after a conversation that Patrick Troughton had pointed out that she might know him because of Doctor Who. So I didn't really think about asking my relatives about their past life. And it's, um, you know, I sort of regret that now that I don't know more about them really. So yes, it is strange that all I actually know about my grandparents and my great aunt Joan is they both met famous people called Patrick Anyway, I had lots of fun with my great-aunt Joan because she had the same sense of humour as me and we shared the same silly ideas. I was just there, I didn't think about the past, I just thought about the present. The fun of bouncing on a trampoline, sellotaping and squashing a half pea on the railway line. This railway line that uh, ran along the back of the bungalow, which was the Romney Hyde and Dimchurch Railway. It's like a small railway, it's the third the size. And although it was a traditional pastime for us, although probably not to be advocated, was sellotaping a half pea to the railway line and then waiting for the train to run by and squash it to twice its size. That was always a satisfying activity, although probably not to be recommended. So if waiting for the steam train to rattle past the back fence of the bungalow was exciting, Going to the big station at New Romney was the pinnacle. This is where you could see the trains up close. Northern Chief, Southern Maid, Hercules, Typhoon, Hurricane. Beautiful machines. We used to collect all the badges. They have these lovely enamel badges. You can still get them. And then you could get on the train and you could go all the way up to Dungeness. One day we made this absolutely huge sand castle. This castle had a huge moat, battlements. We spent hours making this sand castle. And it got to the point where we'd finished it and we had to leave it. And some other boys had obviously had their eye on this sand castle for quite some time. And as we climbed back over the shingle, I remember looking back and seeing them stamping it to the ground. We would spend the evenings playing rummy or pontoon, gambling with a large collection of half peas, the ones that hadn't been squashed on the railway line. And sometimes I used to do a magic show, probably terrible, but everyone clapped and it was a fun thing to do, making posters. I can't remember where I got this, but I remember these machines where you put your money in and you get some kind of treasure out. I remember getting a ring in the shape of a snake was the most exciting thing ever, and I've managed to keep hold of that since I was about eight. Anyone else looking at that would go, what on earth is that piece of thin, twisted metal? But to me, it was the absolute best thing ever.